Go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, so quick introduction about myself. My name is Ved Mistry. I'm the founder of Engineering and Research Leaders of Tomorrow. Uh, my organization's vision is to increase accessibility of scientific research and engineering research for young students, encouraging them to ask questions and think differently about the world around them. Now, I'm glad to have you here today. Seville, uh, would you like to give some background about yourself? Uh, sure. I uh, run the uh, bioengineering educational labs, in our, which is a biomaker space here at, in the University of Pennsylvania in the Department of Bioengineering. And uh, so uh, for people who don't know, bioengineering kind of applies all engineering towards biological systems. And that means we do a little bit of electrical, mechanical, materials, chemical, computer science, all um, uh, with the goal of helping and creating things for medicine and to help people. All right, thank you. And uh, could you maybe give us some insight into what kind of products are currently ongoing in your makerspace? Uh, well, actually nothing right now because uh, <laughs> uh, of COVID-19, mm -hmm. but um, uh, so because it's an educational lab, we are focused on just ongoing courses uh, in that sense. So, um, but we are also an open space. So there are um, startups, for example, that might come in, people, students who are working on startups will come in to use our space for uh, their own activities, personal things, as well as student projects. Uh, currently, unfortunately, uh, we're not doing much beyond just our basic class activities. We're uh, trying to get started for the fall and spring, uh, unfortunately. Okay. Maybe you could tell us a bit about before COVID, uh, what were some projects maybe that you thought were neat that were ongoing that you saw in the makerspace? Um, so several things that are quite, that come to mind. Um, there is a, a few startups that are quite remarkable. One of them uh, comes to mind is a company called Group K Diagnostics. Uh, she came up with a concept for a, uh, of care diagnostic device uh, which she worked on for a senior design project in the space. Uh, she's now a company in Philadelphia. Um, uh, another one uh, is a company by a biology major who had nothing to do with bioengineering. She created a product to help detect when fruit goes starts uh, going bad and helps with the, can ultimately help with the supply chain process. Apparently um, a large amount of fruit gets thrown out every day um, just because you know, there's no automatic way of detecting whether or not things get go bad. And you just kind of open the bin and see, oh, this is bad, let's throw it out. Um, so that's on the kind of the startup side, even uh, for just other projects we've, um, always work with our iGEM team, which is the International Genetically Engineered Machine Competition team. Um, recently, a team built a open source plate reader. So I don't know if you're familiar with these. Um, they're basically, um, it's a device that measures um, fluorescence and absorbance for plates, which are 96 wells. And these devices are normally incredibly expensive. And this team of students created one that was open source. Uh, it's quite remarkable. They even got a journal publication out of it. The publication was referenced in the, pub, uh, in the journal Nature, which is pretty impressive. I think one of the few times in its 150 year history that uh, nature referenced an educational lab. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's kind of the stuff we work on. It's all over the place. Nice. Uh, have you gotten a chance to ever be part of one of the projects directly yourself? Um, 
I guess not directly. It's always a very mentor type relationship. Uh, I like to be as hands off as possible in the sense of I'll answer questions, I'll direct people to resources, help them get started and stuff. But I like to let them, let the students you know, push themselves to the extent that they can. And as a student is working through the engineering design process, what would you say are some traits that uh, would help distinguish great engineers? Wow, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I would say um, a willingness to fail. I think that's often a, a difficult thing for uh, undergraduates especially coming out of um, bright undergraduates which most engineers are uh, they're used to always being incredibly successful with their academic life with whatever projects they've worked on and things like that and being prepared to have an idea spend a lot of time on it and completely fail at it is something that they need to be prepared for and I think those who are comfortable with that use that as an opportunity to learn, I think do really well. Just to give you an example with the plate reader, um, the group actually spent over a month and a half moving in one direction when they realized, oh, this was not the way to go. And they complete, had to completely switch gears. And um, that might have turned off a number of people. Uh, this group continued with it and stuck with it and you know they got a great publication out of it. That's a good story, yeah. Okay, so willingness to fail. And if per se uh, an engineering project completely fails altogether, what student, what steps should a student who is interested in pursuing engineering further continue? Should they just come with a brand new idea? Should they try and take something from the idea that failed and try and develop something on it? What are your thoughts on what to do with the information that they've already collected based off of the time they've already put in? I think it really depends. Uh, I mean, I obviously gave you a example, a very good example where it worked out well, but there are you know, situations where you have this great idea and it doesn't work out and you know you realize no this the entire premise is wrong and may not be the way to go and that kind of happens all the time uh the and you have to be prepared for it i've had uh students come in with these great startup ideas they've gotten money raised money won competitions and they reach a point where oh no this is not going to work. Um, and I think, uh, so that's kind of the extreme example on, on the one's end of things. Um, incidentally, in that example, students should be very honest. And you don't want to go in the way of like Theranos and lie about it. Um, but a lot of times it's just about learning and hopefully you can just kind of the problem that you're trying to solve is still there. And all you have to do is kind of brainstorm and come up with new ideas to move forward. And you now know that, hey, this one idea doesn't work. <laughs> all right. And now for many uh, great engineering projects, let's say that they're able to figure out something that works, something that has a valid effect, uh, and they're able to work around the problems of it. What would you say is like a quick outline of going from the lab to the marketplace? Well, what's like the general route that an engineering project would take? Wow, that's, that's hard for me to answer because honestly, I usually leave the marketplace side of things to uh, more capable people. <laughs> uh, um, much more on the technical side. Uh, I, okay, then maybe you could discuss like going from an idea to something viable that they can then pursue in the marketplace, so maybe that process. I think uh, in general, a lot of it is, from what I've observed, is 
identifying a problem that uh, people are concerned about and early on trying to identify what the market will be and kind of doing that like work um, at uh, Penn and uh, many universities, uh, they, there's usually so many opportunities for students to kind of pitch ideas, get money um, with, you know, no strings attached, which is a great opportunity that universities offer uh, to pursue uh, these types of projects. And I think that's the best way to go rather than kind of sinking your own money into it. Uh, and usually in that process, you can identify mentors, and people in the business side of things who can help you bring your project to market. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't, uh, sometimes I've wondered when people have come up with I, working on ideas, think, I think to myself, wow, who would ever want this? But hey, people will want it. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I try not to judge. I thought the iPad was a dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And so going off of that, I wanted to ask, besides money, what would you say is the biggest reward to someone who wanted to engage in engineering design or the engineering design process? Uh, what would you say is like the biggest reward to the engineer themselves besides the potential of making money? I'd say a lot of it is just the satisfaction and joy of going through the process. Um, again, I'm going back to that open source plate reader project. Uh, just by virtue of being open source, there was no money. Uh, these folks were not trying to make a new plate reader to compete with these expensive ones. They're, you know, this was, hey, this is a plate reader that's as good as these expensive ones, and we're giving you everything so that way you can make it yourself. Um, it was, from the student's perspective, it was just a learning exercise. It was fun. Um, and I think that's what a lot of engineers are looking for. Um, it's not so much the, you know, I'm gonna make millions of dollars by uh, coming up with some idea. In fact, I would say that the students that I've met who've done startups, their goal was definitely not money. Um, it was really just, they had this great idea, they wanna push it through. And quite honestly, at this point, they're probably not making much. They're probably, you know, paying themselves very little money because they're trying to keep their <laughs> company alive. So yeah, I think it's just the, the excitement of seeing their product and their ideas actually going uh, as far as possible. Okay. And uh, now I wanted to ask just a uh, personal question. So what is your favorite product that you've seen in your lab um, so far? Wow. So it's actually, uh, my favorite project is actually a uh, one of our educational lab modules that we do. So it's not these kind of massive student projects or anything like that. This is a project that we have all of our students do, which is um, where we um, uh, cut cockroach legs from a cockroach, a live cockroach, and we put electrodes in it and we learn how to control it. And then the students will put the leg on top of a motor arm so say you get two degrees of motion. The motor moves and the cockroach leg moves. Um, and then the final step in this is that students put electrodes on their own arm. And effectively when their arm moves, this cockroach uh, kind of um, biomechatronic prosthetic will move as well. Um, so that's the premise. And it's fundamentally is really cool uh, it's a very complex thing because you're looking at both human signals and trying to process it. You're trying to understand how to control, precisely control this cockroach leg while at the same time controlling a motor arm. And we push students to kind of put in very creative um, 
context and people have done really fun things like um, using these cockroach motor things to play soccer and things like that. So, uh, uh, so that way when they kick their leg, the cockroach leg will kick it and you have to get the ball across and things of that nature. Um, so that's actually, um, well, it's something that, you know, all of our students do over the course of a few weeks. Uh, it's actually been my most exciting and uh, the time of the year when I, w which I look forward to the most. Nice. That does sound like a lot of fun. Now, uh, I don't have, I don't have any further questions um, for our interview today, but if you have any concluding remarks or words you'd like to give for any students out there who may be interested in pursuing bioengineering, perhaps one day even being a part of your maker space lab, uh, if you have anything to say to them, <laughs> words of advice. Um, I would just say, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, obviously you have to work hard, but just uh, the best teacher is failure. <laughs> uh, and everybody, messes up and it's very normal but you can learn a lot from that and um we encourage it here so if you're you can handle it uh, we welcome you here got it now um before i concluded the call i just had one request uh, i'm sure. looking to continue doing more interviews uh meeting more professors understanding more about various labs um so if you know any professors uh in upenn in bioengineering who you could help me connect with, perhaps forward my email to them. I can forward you an email that you could forward them um, if you uh, were willing to do that. Uh, do you think you'd be able to help me with introduction to some other professors? Possibly. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it would be helpful if you let me know kind of what area okay. that you're interested in. Uh, again, Honestly, I mean, any, anything in bioengineering. I know it's a broad field, yeah. Uh, and I know there's a lot of students who are interested in a wide spectrum of things within bioengineering. So I'm just trying to get my hands on anything that I can in the entire field of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, it would be, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, give me till early October. Just okay. shoot me an email. Sure thing. Uh, right now we're going nuts with uh, trying to start a semester when right. everything's closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, are you in school now? Uh, my school is going to start in two days. Oh, well, where is it? Uh, Fremont. I go to Irvington High School in Fremont, California. Oh, wow. O other oh, side of the country, yeah. Yeah. Wait, well, Fremont is where? Uh, Fremont, California. It's in the Bay Area, East Bay. Oh, my God. Are you near the fires? Yeah, actually, yeah. It's on the hill right <laughs> right next to my oh, house. Gosh. My smoke here is pretty Hopefully, bad. Everything's okay for you? Yeah, so I mean, so far, I know uh, we're right next to the warning zone, the evacuation mm -hmm. warning zone. We haven't been ordered to evacuate yet, um, but it's possible that we might be in the coming weeks, so. Oh my gosh, well, good luck with that. Thank you. And um, what are you studying? Uh, me, so what, what am I studying in school? Yeah. Well, it's high school, so we aren't given like a specific major oh, or subject wow. to follow yeah, school, but okay. uh, I am interested in pursuing bioengineering and business perhaps it's a dual degree or double majoring the two in oh uh, really okay yeah um that's, that's why I'm very grateful for this call that was very helpful oh okay wow uh well if you want to learn more about our program just let me know sure thing happy to, happy to talk to you a bit more about it uh but in any case uh good luck with the fires and good luck with your company <laughs> great Thank you. Good. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.